and it is my distinct privilege to serve as the Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs and Chief Academic Officer here at Philander Smith College. To begin our ceremony, please join me in recognizing our 14th President, Dr. Rodergell Smothers Sr., along with our platform guests, faculty, and freshman class.
Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning again to all of our guests and to our amazing Philander Smith College Community of Scholars. Founders Day is always a day of reflection and celebration at Philander Smith College. On this occasion, we, re we remember how in 1877, members of the community gathered in the basement of Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church to establish the first seminary west of the Mississippi River. At that moment, Walden Seminary was born with the grand design of educating African-American ministers who would go on to be faith leaders for newly freed enslaved people and their children. Subsequently, teacher preparation was added as part of the curriculum because of the need to educate formerly enslaved persons and their children who were punished if they were caught trying to learn how to read and write, thus being deprived of an opportunity for formal education. As a result of this early work, Philander Smith College earned a reputation as a lantern for learning and ministers and teachers. Today, 145 years later, after that prophetic founding, we mark our ascension. This rise includes the forward movement from our original two majors to 18 majors and 17 minors and much more to come. In our 145th anniversary year, we also salute Philander Smith's history of excellence in teaching and providing access to post-secondary education for traditionally and historically underserved populations. We also honor PSC's tradition of social activism, strength, and most importantly, our heritage of faith, each of which are a part of Philander's timeless human values. Philander Smith College has stood the test of time and has proven herself to be a sacred space, which holds the promise of a greater future, the promise of new opportunities, and the promise of life-altering connections. Today, we gather to mark these momentous milestones and divine promises on this special Founders Day, our birthday. And now, please join me in welcoming the renowned Philander Smith College Collegiate Choir under, their, under the direction of Dr. Stephen Hayes, who will share a special rendition of the Negro National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Let us march on. 
Testament reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 10 through 15. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them, and cried out to the Lord. They said, Moses, is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done? to us by bringing us out of Egypt. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Most to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. 
the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. May the Lord bless the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Amen. The New Testament reading comes from Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you take stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, on this day, we thank and praise you for 145 years. 145 years that have been in the basements of seminaries. Now we stand here as a light on the hill. Lord, we thank you for the truth that has so many people through this great institution. And Lord, we pray that in knowing that truth, we make you go out and spread your truth to all corners of the world, Lord. We thank you for Philander Smith College, Lord. We thank you for the ways that it blessed us, the way that it nurtured us, and the way uh, that it has helped us to be able to withstand all of the things that we as a people have had to face. Lord, we pray that it is truly by your grace and your grace alone that we are here. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for the way that it has been projected. That great grace and that great mercy through Philander Smith College. Now, Lord, in this day, help us to continue to be available to your spirit. To be able to keep 145 more years of light, truth, grace, and mercy. We ask all of this in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Dear alma mater, tried and true, we win respect and love for you. We pledge our hearts to you each day, to do our best at work, at play. To the esteemed 14th president of Philander Smith College, Dr. Roderick L. Smothers, Sr., Reverend Ronnie Miller Yow, Chaplain, Dean for Religious Life and Campus Culture, other guests on the dais, faculty, staff, students, and the remarkable alumni are here today in person and joining, joining virtually. The theme for this momentous occasion is very befitting. Still moving Philander forward. For 145 years, Philander Smith College has been a catalyst in providing educational needs to doctors, lawyers, educators, ministers, social workers, entrepreneurs, entertainers, 
name a few. On behalf of the National Law Association for Leonard Smith College Incorporated, we say welcome and thank you for coming to celebrate our 145th Founders Day. Let us continue to support Philander Smith College for years to come because we will forever be a part of you, dear PC. Thank you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a delight to welcome you to the 145th Founders Day observance and commemoration for Philander Smith College. What an honor to welcome you to the Central District of the Arkansas Conference and to join with so many who have anticipated this annual time of gathering, the milestone of Philander Smith College, being sustained for 145 years is worthy of celebration. Amen. Is worthy of celebration. 1877, can you imagine all of what Philander Smith College has witnessed and done since that time? What has this institution witnessed over that time? I think a quick summation is captured in the lyrics and in the melody and in the never wavering spirit of what the song that we're just singing that James and John Johnson hymn or anthem that says, Stony the road we trod, bitter the chesting rock, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet, yet, with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. So I, I welcome you not just to this point in time of celebration, but to what has been and is a historical beacon in the midst of dark times. Yet the light of seeking to educate young women and young men has continued to move on even in the midst of darkness. Philander College has stood. This institution can say, as American folklorist and author Zora Hurston says, I have been in sorrow's kitchen and licked out of all of the pots. Then I have stood on the peaky mountains wrapped in rainbow. Oh, what a vision to come through such sorrow, and yet God has a rainbow at the end of it. Oh, it is my joy and my delight to welcome you here to this 145th celebration and the many things that God still has in store. You are welcome. Because we are free, young women and men, born of free women and men, who are born of free women and men, as as we we celebrate their freedom. Because we are wise young women and men, born of wise women and men, who are born of wise women and men, we celebrate their wisdom. Because we are strong young women and men. 
born of strong women and men who are born, born of strong, strong women and men, we celebrate their strength. We are gathered here to speak their names because the shining example of their incandescent lives we, we are, are here, here to speak the names of our founders. Dr. J. M. Walden, Ms. Adeline Smith, widow of Mr. Philander Smith, for, for whom we are, are officially named. We know that we are walking in footprints made deep by their confident strides that we and the legacy of PSC would live on and on. We are here because we are prodigies of our past presidents, leaders, and alumni who us and so send us into the world to make our mark. Reverend Thomas Mason. Reverend James Monroe Cox. Reverend George Collins Taylor. We are here to speak their names because of the way they made for us, because of the prayers they prayed for us. We, we are, are the, the ones, ones they conjured, conjured up, up, hoping we would have strength enough and, and discipline enough, enough and, and talent, talent enough, enough and nerve enough, enough to step into the light when it turned in our direction. Dr. Marquise Lafayette Harris. Dr. Roosevelt David Crockett. Dr. Ernest Dixon. Dr. Dr. Grant S. Shockley. Dr. Hazel W. Carter. Dr. Meyer L. Titus. We are the ones they hoped would make them proud. Because of all of our hard work makes all of theirs part of something. Better. Truer. Deeper. Something that lights the way ahead like a lamp onto our feet, as steady as the unforgettable beat of our collective heart. We speak your name, Dr. Chu Kibi Reed. We speak your name, Dr. Walter M. Kimbrew. We speak your name, Dr. Johnny Moore. We, we speak, speak your name, Dr. 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 Roger L. Smothers. Because of our founders and leaders of this great institution, we, we are the generation, generation you've been, been waiting for. for. And so, on this Founders Day of Philander Smith College, we, we speak, speak your, your names. Good morning. I don't feel the energy for our Founders Day. Good morning. All right. My name is Kai Wright. I am a junior honors student majoring in computer science, hailing all the way from Washington, D.C. And as the 2021-2022 president of the Student Government Association, it is my privilege to introduce our speaker today, the Honorable Senator Linda Chesterfield. Can I get a round of applause? Senator Leonard Chesterfield was sworn into office January 2011 and represents the District 30, which includes part of Pulaski County on both south and north sides of Arkansas River. Senator Chesterfield is also an assistant pro temporary second congressional district and vice chair for the Joint Committee on Public Retirement and Social Security Systems. She's also a member of several committees and committees. A fierce advocate for the underrepresented and underserved, our speaker has always supported her eloquent and fiery words with tangible actions and solutions. For example, Senator Chesterfield has sponsored wide-ranging pieces of legislation to benefit those who are underserved and under-resourced in our community. As a retired classroom teacher, she is passionate about education and has sponsored legislation to promote growth at Pulaski Technical College and other two-year organizations institutions in Arkansas. She has passed legislation on appropriating funds for the state's historic black colleges and universities that included facilitating over $5 million in funding for Philander Smith College. Let's give a round of applause for that. In light of her work supporting social justice and Philander Smith College, Senator Chesterfield has also been awarded the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters and College Humane Letters by the college, and as a tireless champion of the college, she received the Ford Vision Award at the 2021 President's Scholarship Gala. 
We are grateful that Dr. Senator Chesterfield, an esteemed educator, tireless public servant, and great advocate for PSC is able to be with us today. After the next musical selection, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our Senator, my soror, and the 2022 Founders Day speaker, the Honorable Senator Linda Chesterfield. True religion, 
Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal stay. It's had checks in it and splinters and boards torn up in places with no carpet on the floor. Yeah. But all the time I've been climbing on and reaching landings and, and turning corners. And sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So don't you sit down on the steps. Don't you sit down on the steps. Because you find it's, it's kind of hard. Don't you turn back now because I'm still climbing. I'm still reaching and uh, life for me. Ain't been no crystal day. Good morning, Philander. It is indeed good to be here. The idiomatic verse of Langston Hughes is my testimony. It is my testimony because growing up, my parents did not enjoy a good education. My grandmother said she got her education in the school of hard knocks. But she, they had the sagacity to understand the importance of an education. And so today we are here to celebrate you. We are here to celebrate Philander Smith College. Won't you join me in applauding yourselves? I want to thank Sarah for her wonderful introduction. Thank you so very much. To Reverend Miller Yao for his gracious invitation and to the scintillating president of Philander Smith College, my good friend, Dr. Roderick Smothers. Thank you so very much. Other day as guest, distinguished alum, uh, some of whom I call my great friends. Some of you are my good friends. Some of you are gonna be my future friends. It is my honor to serve in the Arkansas State Senate and to represent at this place, at this time, in the state of Arkansas. It is especially important as we emphasize Founders Day, to remember that we are standing on hallowed ground, 
We are standing on ground that has been fertilized and watered over the years. Just 12 years out of slavery. Just 12 years after the Civil War, someone said black folk have got to have a formal education. And so let us put our hearts and our minds and our faith to making it a reality. And so here we are, 145 years later, still pushing what for land of forward. Pushing for land of forward, not standing on, on the laurels of those who went before, but those people who are here today are saying, we have seen your great work and we are going to continue that legacy. I wanted to look back at some of those folks straight out of slavery that did great things. When I think about Scipio Africanus Jones, a distinguished alumni here, educator, politician, judge, person who represented those folks from the Elaine Massacre, a former member of my church, the First Missionary Baptist Church of Greater Little Rock. Dr. Jones took a chance. He took a chance on learning. He couldn't go to law school, but he could read the law and pay things. He became the first black judge in this area. And there was a white guy who said, well, if he can become a judge, I'm leaving the state of Arkansas. Well, he became a judge and the dude left the state of Arkansas. Good riddance. Anybody who cannot seem great ought to be among us. Am I right or wrong? And then there was Robert Williams. I looked at your distinguished alum page. The list could go on and on, but I, he just struck me. Robert Williams, Professor Emeritus of Psychology and African American Studies at Washington University. This man took a test. You know, they always want to test us. They, all, they didn't have these tests before, but now they've got tests to determine whether or not you can go to college. You don't have to do that to get in Philander Smith College. But it is good to have Dr. Charity Smith here to help you move further if that's what you want to do. Because 100% of those who took the test, the practice exam to become teachers, passed it here at the Lander Smith College. <laughs> Dr. Smith said, Linda, we need $50,000 so that they can take this test. I got them $50,000. <laughs> you have to fight for I turn around two or three times, but those who know me know I just don't accept no for an answer very quickly. And so to get me off their back, suddenly we had that $50,000 after two or three meetings. So that our children did not have to worry about having to pay for a test that's also very expensive. But Robert Williams, had taken a test and he was his IQ, they said, too low for him to go to college. Too low. And you know when people tell you you're not smart, sometimes you actually begin to believe it. And he was depressed for several years. And then he decided to get up off it and try it again. Went on to earn a doctoral degree in psychology and African American studies and started African American studies at Washington University in St. Louis. He said, I'm going to create my own test. It is called the Black Intelligence Test of Cultural Homogeneity. The acronym I'm not supposed to say here because it's founders. Think of it, the Black. Intelligence test of cultural homogeneity. You do it. You got it? If I can't pass your test, I'll create my own test and I'll make sure that black kids are tested on what they know and who they are and they can be successful. That's Orlando Smith College. That's a Orlando Smith alum saying, if I can't do it this way, I'll create a way. And that has gone on throughout the history of this great institution. When I think about Dr. Joycelyn Elders, and you hear me talk about her if you've been around anywhere for a long time, I had the honor of being here when her story was projected. If you don't do anything else, I want y'all got a link for everything, don't you? 
I want you to find the link where she was going through the Judiciary Committee confirmation process. How many of you saw Dr. Katanji uh, Jackson Brown's interview the other day? A woman of grace. I want you to see Dr. Joycelyn Elders when I hot fields in Arkansas, sitting there in front of a Judiciary Committee just as hostile as this one was. She held her own. She became the first black woman in general of the United States, a Philander Smith alum. Lottie Shackelford, my friend, I look at Dr. Charles Donaldson, so many others in this room. Because even though we've done all of that here at this institution, and I say we, because it's a collective, we are in this together. We are in this together. And that collective greatness has been passed on to you. It has been passed on to you. It is time for you to play it forward. It is time for you to say, uh, with your chest stuck out, I'm a Philander Smith alum. I'm a Philanderian. I am a great person who will do great things because it is a part of the legacy of this great institution. I could talk to you about Elijah Pitts who played for the Green Bay Packers or Calvin King in, in Forest City or the first black woman serving mayor of this city, my friend Lottie Shackelford. I could talk to you about a lot of them, but I'm looking for new history. I'm looking for new greatness. I'm looking for you. Know that it is not easy because when we had people step out of slavery, one of them hit his master in the head because he beat his mama. And yet he made it out and went on to become the president of Paul Quinn College in Texas. When you do something, I want you to think how great you really are. How great you really can be. How much we need you to become leaders. Because somebody told me when I was selected to go to Hendricks, Linda Ann Smart, but she's not smart enough to graduate from Hendrix. The devil is a lie. Right. Right. It is not about struggle because Emily Johnson and I were the first to be able to try on shoes in a store. We were the first to be able to go into the lobby of the theater. We were supposed to be able to go where every other Hendrix student could go and therefore opening up the opportunity for blacks who were in that community living in segregation to do the same thing. We played it forward and now it's on you. I am so appreciative of the opportunity to be here this morning, but I say to you very simply, the struggle must go on. And so I leave you with my favorite words. The words of Frederick Douglass who could have been a doctor, of Frederick Douglass who said very simply, if there is no struggle, there is no promise. Those who profess to favor freedom, and that's what your education gives you, and yet deprecate agitation, want the crops without plowing up the ground. They want the rain without the thunder and the lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its mighty waters. This struggle that we're in, may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing, nothing, nothing without a demand. It never has, it never will. We may not get all we pay for in this life, but we must certainly pay for all we get. So Philander, let's stand together as one. Let us speak together as one. Let us be together as one as we play Philander forward. God bless and keep you as my pleasure.
Let's give our speaker the honor of Linda Chesterfield another round of applause. To my brothers and sisters, those who hold in great esteem the purpose of today, our Founders Day, 130th anniversary, the birthday of Philander Smith College. I am honored to be here once again in my eighth year as your president. Let me say thank you to our speaker, the Honorable Senator Linda Chesterfield. I'm grateful that you could join us today, but more importantly, I am grateful that you had a chance to pour into our community of scholars. As I watched the freshmen who were sitting here on the first three or four rows, watch you, I know that they took something from your eloquent words today, something that will inspire them to indeed be the philander men and women of tomorrow. Men and women who will indeed, as our pastor prayed, as our speakers have said, secure Philander Smith College for another 145 years. And Madam Senator, I know that we're limited with what we can do, but I have a couple of things for you today. And uh, they're both very special, but one is especially special. We have in this box a and I, I know you will open it and, and show it, but it is a 145-year-old piece of American brilliant cut glass. And it is in honor of our 145th anniversary. And I want to say, he would, he would not want me to do this, but we have one of our alums, we call his name today, who is a collector of American brilliant cut glass. He has gotten my wife and I interested in it as well. And he donated this piece today, Dr. Charles Donaldson. <laughs> 145 years for your memories, Madam Senator, and for I know what is a massive bookshelf of awards and accolades for all of your years of service. Thank you so much. You'd have to mess up the pretty bow, yes. Okay, She's, she, I knew she would share it with you. You know, I followed Charles at Fuller Junior High School. He was my predecessor teacher. You're very welcome, Madam Senator. <laughs> Number two, you don't have to open that one. Take that one home and, and, and allow Mr. Chesterfield to share that one with you. Let's get a big picture if you don't mind. Thank you, Madam Senator. Let me also say thank you to the members of this community of scholars for making this day possible. We have a number of folks that I would like to thank and honor today, but first let me start with Reverend Ronnie Miller Yao and Dr. Shannon Clowney Johnson and our entire Founders Day Planning Committee. Let's give them a round of applause. To each of our program participants, I'm always amazed and blown away at the uh, talent of our students from the Philander Smith College Collegiate Choir under the leadership of Dr. Hayes. And what do you think about the PSC creatives? No doubt to Mr. and Miss Philander Smith College, they always do an amazing job. And our SGA president, Madam Kai Wright, is just a shining example of who we expect our Philander women and men to be. And no doubt, I'm noticing here in the audience, we have a number of students here today, but we have 
Peter seated on the front row here. Why don't you all stand so the alums and others can see you? We have several members of our board of trustees who are here today. A couple of them have spoken on the program, but let me ask them to just wait where they are to be recognized. Members of my executive cabinet are here today. Let's acknowledge, thank them. Members of the cabinet, they are here. Dr. Dunn and to you and to all of our esteemed alums who will be gathering this weekend for the National Alumni Association Convention where you'll be gathered around the theme of celebrating our purpose with passion and Panther pride. What an excellent way to not only celebrate our birthday, but to kick off our NAA convention. Thank you so very much for being here with us. And last and certainly not least, let me recognize an amazing group of people who show up here every day, not only to continue the legacy of Flanders Smith College, but to pour into the students who are part of this community, who represent our future. Will all of our faculty who are sitting over to my right and staff members please stand and be recognized today. All of our faculty and staff members. Thank you so very much. When I talked to Senator Chesterfield about the needs of this institution, and she only talked about the $50,000, but let me tell you, it's been through Dr. Linda Chesterfield uh, and her efforts that we have been able to not only launch our workforce initiative with close to $3 million in support for that initiative, thanks to Linda Chesterfield. First, real set aside for historically black colleges and universities of $4 million that, that she insisted was split equally among the four HBCUs. And so Philanda got a million dollars, came at the hand of Linda Chesterfield. And in between there, we got another $500,000, Madam Senator, for scholarships and for technology and to support faculty members. That is always her mandate, that we do something to support these students and something to support academic excellence in this community. And so thank you, Madam Senator. Thank you to our faculty and staff for all that you do. Today, my friends, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate the college's historic founding, which continues and will always be rooted deeply in the traditions of the United Methodist Church. Today, we celebrate a legacy of excellence that has paved the way for our philander forward movement. For the past 145 years, Philander Smith College has advanced a social justice agenda that has provided students who have the thirst for knowledge and access to a quality education the opportunity to come onto these sacred grounds. And no matter where they start in life, no matter what their financial background is, no matter honestly what their education preparation is, we give them that opportunity as long as they are serious. That is our position that maintains the reason why Philander Smith College is and will always be a beacon of light and hope for generations to come. And I am honored to be the 14th president at this time and in this case. As one of our great leaders, Warriors for Justice, Nelson Mandela once said, as long as poverty, injustice, and gross inequality persist in our world today, none of us can truly rest. And that is why at our 145th anniversary, we cannot rest. Not me, not elected fish official, Madam Senator, not our faculty or staff, not our board of trustees, not our alumni, and certainly not our students. There's still more work to be done. The work of social justice, the work that comes to life through our amazing mission statement that has stood the test of time to graduate academically accomplished students who are grounded as advocates for social justice and who are determined to change the world for the better. My position over the last few months has been that our democracy hangs in the balance that America is truly in the fight for her life. 
And on February the 1st of this year, on the first day of Black History Month, we received here at Philander Smith College, this 145-year-old institution, our greatest threat for even those who didn't even want to see us established in 1877. At 3 a.m. in the morning, we received a call from the Little Rock Police Department saying that there had been a bomb threat on this campus. Many of you know that many of our historically black colleges and universities received such threats. But it was on that day, after help from the FBI and the Little Rock Police Department and our own campus security team, where is our chief, Chief Arthur Williams? Where is he? He's standing there in the back. I want you all to give Chief Williams a round of applause. Not only did he wake us up at 3 a.m. in the morning and say, Houston, we have a problem, but he immediately sprung into action to make sure that this campus was safe. And by 12 noon, I was standing, Madam Senator, in my freshman colloquium class, teaching many of the students you see right here on the same day of the bomb threat. And here is what I reminded them, that even in a time where these institutions, our HBCUs, were established, there is a documentary that tells a story. It's called Tell Them We Are Rising. Tell Them We Are Rising. In this documentary, Booker T. Washington says this, and I quote, that an educated Negro is a dangerous Negro. End quote. I use those words today to inspire the next generation. I use those words today to remind my students that your education is more valuable today than it has ever been. And that the moment you give up on being educated is the moment that you hand over this beautiful legacy to the adversary. And you cannot do that. So in the words of one of my favorite college presidents, I remind you as I come to a close and thank you for this beautiful ceremony today. It is an appropriate time for us to pause to recognize this unparalleled legacy. It is an appropriate time for us to recognize the treasures and the talents that we have in you, our students. You hold the future. You hold the future. The next 145 years belong to you. This president said in his poem that you don't have much time. In fact, he says that I only have a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me. Can't fuse it. You think you can choose it, but it's up to you, my students, to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give an account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. To my members of the Philander Smith College Community of Scholars, 145 years we have stood the test of time, and yet through all that we have been, we are still moving Philander forward. Despite what the enemies may say, despite what the adversaries may say, we are still moving for Lander Ford. And as we move forward, we don't have a lot of time. In fact, we only have a minute. But in this minute that God has given us, I can guarantee you that as long as we are here today, that we must and must continue to hold the banner that we call for Lander College High. And because of it, and because of where we sit, we will continue to make sure that justice is achieved in every field of rational endeavor. That is your responsibility. That is the purpose of your degree. And more importantly, that is the purpose of this dynamic mission statement. Thank you all so very much. May God bless each and every one of you. And may God bless Philander Smith College.
As you're able, would you please stand with us as we prepare, as we prepare to dismiss in this place? I want to remind you today that um, everyone is invited to the cafeteria for lunch. I want to invite you to join us at that time. Amen. Amen. There will be tickets at the door for you as you leave out of this assembly. If you would please remain standing where you are as the as the platform guests are dismissed. Let us pray. Father, when we consider 145 years, a lot can be said. More than time would allow. But Father, allow us to just give you two words. Thank you. Like Israel, if it had not Lord was on side. 
you would not have made it this far. So, Father, as we leave this place but never from your sight, Father, you've been good to Philander. Philander has been good to us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, let us commit to be good to Philander. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.